Big episode coming up here. We've got a ton of bolt-on performance parts for the S15. As you can see, there is some serious hardware here. I am very excited. We are gonna free up some horsepower. We're gonna turn up the boost eventually and make some decent power with this setup. But first, that means getting this car onto the hoist and stripping a bunch of stuff off.
Well, I had to go there. I had to power wash the engine bay. It deserved it. It was a little bit dirty from the body shop and man, this thing cleaned up really, really, really well to the point where I was going to redo the, uh, the valve cover. But then when I look at it right now, I'm like, you know what? It just has like that perfect amount of patina. It's not like it's, it, it's flaking or falling apart. It just like looks just good enough. I'm going to leave it a bunch of the, you know, like all of this stuff here is just super, super clean. You can still see the, uh, the zinc coating on it. So I'm kind of shocked at how well uh, this car has, uh, has kind of like kept itself up over the years, given that it is a high mileage car. And there was just some interesting stuff when we were pulling the, uh, the rad and the side mount intercooler, which was really neat. That in itself is cool, but the uh, the air box here, did you guys see that padding inside the air box? So it like, I guess just quiets down the airflow so you can't hear the turbo flutter. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna remove all that and give you an open air filter just to make some more noise because that's what we love to do. You did see us use some blue tape around the, uh, the fenders and the, the headlights and that stuff, I will leave a link in the description. I know a bunch of you posted in the comments before when we used it. What is that stuff? And it, I guess it's like painters mask. Oh, crash tape. Crash tape, yeah. So, and it's really good on your fenders. The one thing we do find is on fresh paint jobs, you can't leave it on for too long because it will harm it. Even on older paint jobs, you do want to spray a bunch of the quick detailer on it and then put it over. So the older the, the and the harder the paint, the easier it does come off. But there are people that put it on, leave it for like three weeks, go to take it off and uh, bad things do happen. We're obviously going to be doing some exhaust mods as well. That means removing what is the stock exhaust system. This is uh, now I bet a very, very rare sight to see even a stock catalytic converter. Check out the way they did the heat shielding on this stuff. It's really, really neat. They, they were kind of ahead of their time, DP, uh, because these days people steal these cats and you know, look at this. There's like this massive shield on here. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess you could cut it here or cut yeah, it here, but good. still, yeah. it's uh, it's super neat to see this kind of stuff. Like, look at that. That is yeah, super cool. Heavy duty. The thing is, look at the diameter of the downpipe though. It is pea shooter spec. So we are definitely going to go to a three inch. That is going to help it breathe. And we also want to get rid or uh, upgrade that O2 extension pipe. So let's see if I can crack these, uh, these nuts on here. Oh, oh nice. That. So good. There's even a little bit of rust. I should have sprayed it with WD, but I didn't need to. I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm not I'm just going to go like this, crack them loose. Let's see if I can get another one loose here. So good. This is the opposite That's, of the Canadian car experience. It, it, it really is, it really is. And what? there it is, three for three. You gotta straighten it out for a sec? Yeah. Just keep straightening it. Yeah, one piece. That's a beast. Next up here, I got to remove these heat shields. And at first I thought, oh look, these little bolts are going to be pretty rusty. They're not going to come out, but I cracked them loose and they come out by hand. By hand, people. That is just unheard of for me. Every time we try to do any of this kind of stuff, it's always just like, got to get the bolt buster out. And this car here, look at, coming out by hand and I should be able to remove this heat shield in a second. We are now on to the nuts and bolts here on the O2 extension. And let's see. Oh, do you see that? Do you see that, look? It turned already? It's turned. Look at this, I'm using my hip, I have my fingers again, DP. It's a finger day. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. unbelievable. This upper heat shield hasn't fared so well. You can see it's a little bit rusty. Got a couple of stress cracks in it, so I'm gonna be replacing that. And let's look at the manifold here though. Wow, it's a uh, pretty clean DP. I haven't seen clean. one of these in this nice shape. Look at the nuts and the studs. Man, no rust on those either. You can see how restrictive this uh, O2 extension downpipe is. It comes off the turbo, out of here there, 
and all the exhaust gases are forced down into this tiny little area right there. Look at the, it's, it's even, it's, it's hard to see without any light here, but uh, it necks down considerably like this and then just tries to get forced through here. So uh, this is a, a, a very, very good mod to be making here. Let me check the turbo. We ran this car before. This was making, I think it was what, one bar of boost, so 14 PSI without issue. And it, man, it feels really, really good. No shaft play at all, no forward backward play. I'm also going to be upgrading the wastegate actuator here. These are uh, notorious for over boosting and not holding boost pressure properly, especially ones that are higher mileage. So I do have an upgrade for this. And man, DP, I think this is everything. We have stripped this motor now down to where I need it to do a uh, maintenance mod, but it's also an upgrade. The factory motor mounts on these SRs are always notoriously bad. I don't know if I can show you, but you can probably see there's quite a bit of movement in the engine. And if you look down here at the actual engine mount, when I do that, you can see See how much play there is? And that's just me moving it just a little bit. So you can imagine once you start driving this thing, I had a look at it, all the rubber starting to crack on it. I'll show you once I get it out. But I am going with a set of hard race engine mounts. The whole set does come with the trans mount as well. These are rubber, which is a big thing for me. I don't like the poly ones. I've run them in the, before and the hard or the, uh, the the full metal ones. Those ones are just race only unless you're super hardcore. The tricky thing is installing these with the engine in the chassis. I think what we need to do is lower the subframe a bit. We also got to get our, um, what do you call that thing, DP? Is that I, like a strut tower lift? I, let's just call it an engine lift. We'll show you in a second how it works. And we got to raise the engine up a bit, lower the subframe, and then we should be able to slide these in and out. Okay. As you saw, the exhaust side top nut for the, uh, the engine mount there is pretty easy, easily accessed. On this side though, it is, uh, it's deep, it is buried underneath the uh, the oil filter. It's a bunch of like manifold support brackets in the way and to make matters worse, like I, I've got my long wrench on here, um, but there's a stud that holds a heat shield in place over the mount. And that is preventing me from actually turning this and getting any type of leverage on here. So with this ratcheting wrench, I can drop it on quite easily there. And we are on. And I just need some superpower strength here. Let's see. Oh, there I think goes. I got it. Yep. Underneath, I've disconnected any possible hard lines. Like you can see this one here um, that would potentially get damaged or bent with the subframe coming down. I think other than that, everything else is hooked up to rubber lines. So now we've got uh, four nuts holding on the subframe here. And I'm not gonna take them out fully. I'm just gonna bring them down. You can see the subframes come down. Yeah. But we have like, man, over, over an inch to go here to get the stud out get, of the subframe. Yeah, because we've got two studs. I pulled the stud in the bottom here. You can see the, the engine mount is now loose. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it still has a long way to go. So maybe what we'll do is we'll try to raise the engine at this point, um, or, you know what, let's just pull these bolts. I don't think there's, it's, the subframe's not gonna come crashing down. It's hooked up to everything, so. I don't think it's going to be a, a huge deal to to take these off here. Okay, so I bet you this side now. Yeah, that looks like it's going to come out. It's almost ready to fall out of there. <laughs> there it goes. Okay. This side is out here. How does it look? Well, 
Um, as you'd expect, very old riddle. You can see like, look at the amount of movement it has with me just moving my hand. Yeah. You know, the mounts are always really soft. And you can see there, there's tears all along this area yeah. here. We are nowhere near clearing on this side with this engine mount. Like it, it has likely an inch to go and you can see the subframe is kind of just like stuck. So what I'm gonna do is pull the uh, steering shaft out of the rack here. You can see it's already starting to slide down. Which yep. is, yeah, there it goes. Yep. Which is exactly, I think, the issue that we had here. I'm gonna pull it all the way out. That should now give me the ability to, to br you can see, bring this down lower and lower. Oh, there it is, okay. And, oh, wow. Out. And this one, also very, very soft. You can see a crack starting there. This may be hard to see, but if I line these up, you can see that this mount, the new one, is considerably higher, and that's because all of the, the rubber here has sagged and just aged out. So this may prove to be uh, even trickier now to put back in, but let's see how this goes. In the hole. Okay, let's drop it, try to drop it into the hole here. Oh my God, there's just no, no clear. There, all right. There you go, in. The subframe is coming back up. Yep, the side's coming up too. Ooh, yeah, she settled in See? the hole. Yeah, there, there you go, there yeah. you go. We're in, all right. Now it's just a matter of bolting everything together we'll be good to go here. Moving on to the rear trans mount, you can see the amount of play this thing has. Watch, look at this. And that's very, very typical. The transmission mounts are always super soft. And now let's see the hard race one. Yeah, that's considerably stiffer, but still has, I think, a good amount of play that, you know, will make this compliant, but will just give you that proper feel. There it is. Our mounts are in place and I had to raise the transmission a considerable amount to get the uh, the bolts back in here. And you can see the gap here. This These rubber uh, bushings have, or mounts have, have failed considerably. And you can see how much higher the new rubber here is restoring it back to spec. So I truly believe this is going to really bring this car back to like new uh, feeling in terms of like the, the way the gearbox shifts and the way the engine moves and all that. It's time to move on to the Gretti front mount intercooler setup and it is a bolt in uh, solution, which I do like. However, we do have to drill and cut some pieces here. Um, the first one being the intercooler piping that runs to the throttle body has to have a path through this area here, which is the battery tray. And of course, I, I have marked it as per the instructions, it's right there, but it's not on a flat surface, DP. They always get you. It's gotta be just slightly off, uh, no big deal. And I am gonna just punch it here like this, and then we can come in with a drill. We don't have to be super exact here, only because I know I'm gonna drill a bit of a bigger hole. Ooh, that hurt the ears, yep. that hurt the ears. There, that that's, should be good. And now let's start some drilling here. Freddy wants us to drill uh, an 80 mil hole. I've got an 89 mil hole. Oh man. Let me just double check this, because this, oh, wow. Oh, there's actually a lot, wow. I don't love, it's like going almost into the frame rail here. Really? Yeah, which Ooh. is kind of. make sure we don't touch the frame rail. Maybe the 80 That's the hole, hole that, is as big as we can go without touching the frame rail. I might have to move this over a bit, yeah, because it is, uh, if, if you look at the size of this, I mean, this is, you know, 10 mil, let's just say nine mil over. Um, when you come to this side over here, see it's super super close like it's right on the edge here I'm gonna Can have you to drill it from the bottom then so you I, I'm gonna have to cut here into this which I really don't want to do I want to try to keep it on a flat surface so 
So I just drew the 80 mil hole here that we need to cut and um, the 89, as you can see, is just a little bit over. You probably can't see that, but it's not a lot. I am still a little bit concerned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat it over a little bit and see, just dr drill a new pilot hole super close to the other one and see if that, if I can manage to make that work. Now when I put this in here, you can see I am over a little bit more here. I'm just gonna mark it there. You can kind of see it's not by a lot, but uh, it's hopefully it'll be enough to where the fitment will still be good. We're not gonna have any issues. I think it was the right call to cut it this way. As you can see, we just missed going down the side of the metal. So I think at this point, I'm gonna seal it up. I'm pretty confident that we do have the right cut. So we got a little bit of pour 15 here. I'm gonna run right along the edge just so it doesn't rust out on us. is it the last bolt for the intake and this is all temporarily mocked up right now you'll find out later why but as you can see we did use a ton of Gretti products we have a Gretti type I think 24 LS intercooler kit it is one of the the smaller kits I don't know why they wanted us to cut the front rebar there because we ended up cutting it and it looks like it would have fit without it I suspect it is for a larger uh, intercooler, which we have now future-proofed this vehicle. Uh, we did put their FV2 blow-off valve on here with the pipe. And uh, the one thing I don't love about this is they don't include, you can see this coupler and this coupler. So we have a black coupler here and a black coupler here. Not my favorite, but I'm not going down the rabbit hole. We went down this rabbit hole with the FDRX7 and it just turned into a mess because it's super hard to find couplers that match. You either go all black and then it's tough to find the sizing or you try to find blue, which doesn't match the Gretti stuff. Um, and the last thing we installed here is the suction kit. As you can see like that, you can notice the mass airflow is gone. So that 
can tell you what we have in store for the future. Now, all of these products can be sourced through Turn 14 distribution by your local performance shop. And Throttle, the YouTube channel that a lot of you have heard of, also sources a lot of their products from Turn 14, and we have partnered with Throttle to offer you 6% um, off of any product on their website, including products like these uh, from Gretti. So if you go check out the links in the description, you will see a discount code there, products or links to the products as well. If you know SR20s, then you know they love to overheat in track applications. So it is incredibly critical to make sure you upgrade your cooling system. And for that, of course, we have gone with a Koyo Rad N-Flow dual pass radiator. That means this thing is going to have the coolant run twice through it before it goes back into the engine, which does provide superior cooling. It also, as you can see, has better fin density, which improves cooling as well. And lastly, let's just compare sizing here. Look at the, the factory rad. Look how thin it is. And look at how fat boy the, the Koyo one is. Um, the small little downside is this one is a little bit lighter, but not by much considering the amount of cooling protection you're getting. This is a must upgrade for any SR20 powered S chassis. Like all Koyo rads, the fitment on them is spot on. You can see we've got the factory shroud bolted into place. Look at that, fit up like a champ. You know what, look at this. Woo. We ran into a problem we here. Did. We did. See, this is why this is it bolts. parts meeting after. Well, parts. this will fit. I just, you, you need to pull the, the, the piping now to bolt this in place. There we go, much better. Now we just drop this in place. Of course, you gotta get, have that fan in there. And now, this is the part where I can't see below to get it to drop in. There we go, into place. Let's get this bolted in. And look, I think this is gonna fit. Whoops, we can drop some piping down there, but there you go. All right guys, that is going to be a wrap on this episode. Sadly, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing this engine bay come together, and it really has. But there's a little bit left. We still do need to do a full exhaust system, do that actuator. We want to put a standalone ECU and hopefully in the next episode, we will get this thing fired up. It'll be great to hear and it'll feel very, very rewarding. We've been uh, chewing through this thing, DP. We're making time. That's right. Nothing has really, you know, hit us hard yet. And uh, I'm going to say that that is because this is, you mentioned this, you said this is a simple every man's car the SR20, not like an RB26. This vehicle, this chassis and this engine, it's just pretty easy to work on. So I'll end it there. Thank you so much for watching once again and we will see you in the next one.